What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be continuing our beginner series, and we're going to be talking about Ascensions in Path of Exile 2. Now, Ascensions can be a little bit confusing, but I'm going to break it down for you and try to make it as easy as possible to understand. So that way, when you guys are building your characters, you'll know what you want to build into and how you actually want to play your character. So first things first is what is an Ascendancy? An ascendancy is what you're going to unlock as you progress through the story. And this is how you are going to shape your character. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. This is for the witch class, and this is a blood mage or blood witch. So essentially, you have your base character, which would be witch. And then your ascendancy is going to be what your what kind of witch you will be. So in this case, you will be a blood mage witch. So with that, the ascendancy comes with very strong ability in nodes where you can shape and determine how you want to play your character. So for example, as you're coming through here, there's gore spike here. So this is a node that you can take to increase the critical damage bonus per 20 life that you have. So these ascendancies are going to give you and your character a huge boost and kind of determine how you want your character to actually be played. Um, as an example on this monk and scatter them to the winds, it grants an elemental expression and it triggers it on a melee crit. So if you have built your character up in your passive tree along with your gear to help with this elemental expression to trigger some additional damage or ailments onto your enemies then this is a node you would definitely want to take another really good example of this is with the uh where is it with the um the ranger here so when you take dead eye as a ranger you get a skill node called Endless Munitions, which is going to allow you to fire an additional projectile for free. So if you are a ranger and you're being a strictly a bow ranger, then having something like Endless Munitions where you fire another arrow or Gale Winds, which get, gets you Tailwind on skill use, which Tailwind is just going to increase your attack speed and your movement speed. These are the kind of nodes that you want to take because it's going to hyper-focus what kind of character that you actually want to play so ascendancies are very very powerful it's basically what you're going to shape your character into for reference like in diablo for example when i play a rogue and i want to be a twisting blades rogue it's essentially building the character for the rogue around twisting blades this is the same thing it's just your ascendancy is what you're going to be building around for your character itself so I hope that that, under, that helps you guys out a lot. So we will get into the nodes once they, we actually get them fully released. Uh, GGG has done a very good job at keeping all of the nodes on each of the ascendancies um, very quiet. So as we continue to play, I will update this video, guys, and go in more depth with each of the nodes that we have. I think we can actually see half of them now, but we will talk about that in a later video. I just want to have a baseline so you guys kind of understand what an ascendancy is. Now, when you ascend, each character is going to have two different ascendancies that you can pick from. So I'm going to skip forward in this video really quickly so you can see, um, just kind of see the graph here. You're going to be able to pick from two different ascendancies uh, for each character. When the full game actually gets released, you will be able to pick from three different ascendancies to kind of choose what kind of character that you want to be. So as an example here for your witch, you can pick from the Blood Mage Witch, which I highlighted before, or the Infernalist. Now, each ascendancy is going to build around different types of skills that you would want to use for your character. In this example, the Blood Mage is all about doing blood damage with bones, bone spears, uh, a little bit of minions, and... Or excuse me, it's the opposite. Blood Mage is all about using your minions and the Infernalist is shape-shifting you into a basically Lilith from Diablo. So they have two different kinds of styles that you want to play the witch. So in early access, if you guys are going to be playing, you'll be able to pick from two. When the game fully releases, you'll be able to pick from three. Now I want to note before we dive deep in how to actually ascend that in early access you will only be able to pick one of these and you will not be able to change it in path of exile one you can change them as long as you have the points to change it 
like refund the points and then pick again. Um, or you'll be able to like change your ascendancy altogether. In Path of Exile 2 early release, you will not be able to do that. So make sure you are dead set on which ascendancy that you want to play because you will only be able to pick one. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the Ascendancy Ascension Trials and how you go about unlocking your Ascendancy and how to attain it. So there's two different ways in Path of Exile 2 that you guys are going to be able to unlock and do the Ascension Trials and then gain points to do that. Now, in Path of Exile 1, um, it's very similar. You will be able to get uh, points every time you ascend, and you'll be able to get six points, I believe. It's two, four, six. I think it's eight now. Uh, points that you'll be able to ascend in um, and you get two points each time you complete to put into your ascension tree now how do you go about it so how you do this is is you're going to find and defeat monsters like this these are uh like daijin which are basically like genies you got to find these uh, monsters and kill them and what's going to happen is it is going to drop a coin as you're going to see here it's this quest item this coin and this is the coin that you're going to have to find, which unlocks the ability to actually go do the trials. From what I understand, the trials are accessed in Act 2. So you'll be able to find these halfway through the campaign and start getting your ascensions. That'll give you a huge power boost to your character. Once you get one of these coins, you'll be able to put it into the Relic Altar. You'll confirm it, and then you can start your trial. Now, as you are advancing through uh, these tests of strength, there's a few things that I want you to notice here. So you're going to be going through floor after floor after floor to get to the end to fight a boss. Each floor is going to have a different objective, which you guys will see in the top right hand corner here. So this floor will be find and defeat all rare monsters. You have to do this to advance to the next floor. So it'll also say it in the blood chalice, defeat all rare monsters in the area to fill the chalice. And once the chalice is filled, you'll be able to advance to the next floor. Each floor is going to have a different criteria or quest, if you will, to defeat that floor to move to the next one. OK, down here, you're going to have three different types of keys as rewards that you can get for completing each floor. You got bronze, silver and gold. And then you're also going to get this uh, mystic water, which we'll talk about in a second. So as you can see, you're just going through, you're looking for these monsters and you got to defeat them. Now in Path of Exile 1, when you would do a trial, if you died, you would fail the trial. Okay, you would fail the trial and then you'd have to do it again. In Path of Exile 2, it's a little bit different. You have what's called honor. So you have honor here. It's hard to see it. The honor is down here in the left hand corner if they would pop this window out or when you go into your inventory, you will see it. But you gain honor from killing monsters. But if you lose honor, then and you get your honor down to zero, you will fail the trial. So I believe if you also die, it is similar to Path of Exile 1. You also fail the trial. So make sure you are on your A game when you're going through these floors. You can see the blood chalice is filled. So now we advance to the next trial. And at the end of each floor, you will get a reward. In this case, you're going to get a silver key. These rewards can go from keys to mystic water to gear and items. So once you collect your treasure, you're going to move to the next section of the trial map. So let's pause right here. This trial map is the map you need to complete to get to the boss. So you're going to start here. You're going to see your first reward as a key. And then when you're going through, you can pick e any way that you want to go. So you can go up and then down and then down again and then up, down. Whichever route you want to take, you can until you get to the boss. Now, depending on which floor that you want to do, as you guys can see on this illustration, that each one has different rewards. So as an example, if I wanted to go up, I could complete this floor and get a bronze key. And then if I want to go down, I can complete this floor and get a gold key. OK, the keys will be used for the end room after you defeat the boss. So these rewards you're going to see each time you complete the floor so you can choose which way you want to go. So as you continue to go through the boss, a lot of the things are going to change. So again, as you see up here in the right hand corner, defeat the ritual casters to close the portals. So you got to defeat those to, to close the portal so you can advance. Now, these next ones are gauntlet trials. So these are a little bit different than just defeating a room and getting a key. 
So these are uh, awards a large sacred water fountain, afflicts you with spiked shell on entry, and monsters have a 50% increased maximum life. So if you want to do these, this is where you get that sacred water from. It gives you a bane or boon, and then you have a bane, and then you have a boon for the monster. So now all the monsters have 50% increased max life. These modifiers are completely random each time you want to choose to do a gauntlet trial with sacred water. But you can pick and choose, and you could try to avoid these if you don't want to do them. So the gauntlet trials are actually really cool because the sacred water is very important, which we'll talk about as soon as we get to the boss fight here. So it's very, very cool. So there's traps that can be put in these things. Each floor is going to be uniquely different, which I think is going to make running these things. This floor, for example, was just a survive until the timer runs out right here. And then it's really cool because you can get stuff like the sacred water and it recovers 20% of your honor and gives you a random boon which is pretty cool. So you can get even more water, which you can see down in the right-hand corner here at 52. Now, once you go through, it's really cool. You get to see your major uh, boon that we just got. There's a cloak that you can unlock, which when you die, you revive once with full honor, which is really cool. It's basically like a cheat death. I think these trials are very unique and very, very fun, and I can't wait to actually try them out. Now, once you get actually get to the end of the trial, there's going to be like these guys, these more Daijin, these ghosts or genies, if you will. And they're actually a merchant. And this is where that sacred water comes in because the sacred water can be used to purchase these items from this merchant. So you can get stuff like 50% increase honor restored. You can get 50% more sacred water found. You can pick and choose what you actually want to purchase, which will help you along your trial, which I think is really, really cool. So you can give banes and boons to monsters or buffs to yourself. Next, you have the floor boss. So each room, if you will, each room or each floor, this is the main boss. And once you defeat him, you would have defeated your first trial. So at the end, you're going to come into this room. And remember all those keys that I told you about? So now this is the room with all the treasure chests. This is very similar to Path of Exile 1. And you'll be able to unlock any chest that you have a key for. So if you have a bronze key, you can pick any one at random. Same thing with silver and gold. All the loot inside each of the corresponding chests are random. But each one that you do that silver or gold or the higher tier will give you better quote unquote loot and or currency, which is very cool. So you, it really helps you to navigate which route that you actually want to take when you're doing your ascendancies. After that, you come over and you get to pick your ascendancy. You can pick either one. Remember, you can only pick one and you cannot change it. When you complete your very first ascendancy, you're going to get two points. Okay, you're going to get two points that you can put in here. You can see uh, this. You can put two points in and then boom, you are done. Now you can find the exit, exit this trial, and then you can move on to either the next trial or you could repeat this trial. So what's cool is before we talk about the second trial that you can actually do, which is the trial of chaos, this is a good point to mention that you can either do that first trial or the trial of chaos, and you can do them multiple times each to can get your maximum amount of points for your ascendancy. In Path of Exile 1, you had four different ascendancies that you needed to complete, each one giving you two points, and they were each different. In Path of Exile 2, you're going to have two different trials that you can complete, and you can do them each multiple times to reach your maximum points, which is four times two, so you get eight total points to put into your ascendancy. Now, the second trial, this is the trial of chaos. So if you want to do something a little bit different as opposed to navigating a board with floors or rooms to complete a boss with different treasures, you can come over and do the trial of chaos. Okay, the trial of chaos is a little bit different. I think it's really, really cool. I think the trial of chaos is going to be something I would really like to do um, just because it adds such a variety. So when you do the trial of chaos, all right, you're going to have to do the trial master. Again, we're still going to have to find these coins and stuff to activate these trials. But once you get in here, you're going to have the trial master. Now you have 10 total rounds that you're going to need to complete. Each round is going to add one of three modifiers that you guys are going to see here on the screen. So this is unstoppable monsters. Monsters on this room. So round one, 
could not be slowed or stunned if you pick that one. Next would be Impending Doom. A ring of chaos appears on the ground, which grows over time, detonating once it reaches the maximum area. Or you can pick the final one, which is Shocking Turrets, so traps. Challenging area contains turrets that will periodically fire lightning projectiles ahead. So each round, you're going to be able to pick one of three, quote unquote, modifiers that is going to be applied to the floor. And as you increase in the rounds, these modifiers are going to become increasingly more harsh or harder and add crazy modifiers to this to make it a little bit more challenging. Now, in addition to this, you still are still going to have honor and all of these things, but you have a quest here. So even if you do pick a trap or you pick a Bane Boon, you have to defeat all of the monsters on the floor. Each round is going to be different, right? Each round is going to have a different quest and you're going to be able to, you know, try to defeat that so you can move on to the next floor. It's these, I should mention that each of these floors or rooms are relatively small. They're not too big, so it shouldn't take too long to get through any of them. And then you move on to the next floor and you're going to pick out of three additional um, modifiers. Now, at the end of each round, you're going to have some treasure here and you can inspect and compare. This is potential treasure that you can get as you're continually going through each trial for the Trial Masters Challenge. All right. This, these are really cool items. A lot of them are going to be corrupted and you pick and choose and just move through. Okay. Each of them are going to have different trials that you have to do. And it's a really, really cool thing. Now, at the end, like you can fight the boss and you'll have a boss here. Each of these, like you'll have to escort this thing along the way. So each of them are going to be really different. And then, of course, you have the boss here. Once you defeat this boss in the trial of chaos, it is the exact same thing in the first trial. You're going to be able to pick your ascendancy or add points. And then you have your trial rewards here that drop on the ground. So you can pick all them up that you've unlocked throughout the trial. And then you come and pick your ascendancy. You add points onto it, however that you want. And then you leave the temple of chaos. And then you can do it again to add more points. I think the ascendancies in the game are really, really cool. And this is such a big way to power up your character. All right, we can dive deeper if you guys want me to once the game releases, or we can go over all of the different nodes that we already know in another video, but I will save that for that. Um, ascendancies are basically what you're shaping your character around. So make sure you research and pick wisely on whatever class that you're choosing. For example, I'm gonna be starting off as Sorceress and I'm playing the Cryomancer and that's what this is here. It is the complete manipulation of time. So I want to go ahead and turn this this on real quick so you guys can hear this because this is what I'm going to be playing. Time itself. She literally has the ability to stop time with time freeze. Time freeze. That, but she has many other time manipulation abilities. It's so Using cool. Using temporal rift, she can teleport back to a previous location, resetting her life uh. mana back to what it was. Or with time snap, she can reset all her cooldowns and cast all her spells again. Bang! Teleport. On the warrior. So it's really cool so basically i would be shaping my character all around time manipulation and the bonuses that would go into those nodes so yeah guys i hope this really makes it easy for you guys to understand it's a little bit of a lengthy video but i hope it does help out a lot of new players coming into poe2 because i'm going to be playing i only played you know four or maybe five leagues on poe1 so i'm no i'm not a master of the game but I've been learning a lot and I want to share it with a bunch of you guys because there's a lot of new players coming into the genre and this game because it's going to be absolutely epic. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, guys. Comment down below any questions that you guys have about ascendancies. I'll be more than happy to answer them. It's going to help me out with the algorithm. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.